Okay, this video is about our endocrine doctors, the diabetes experts. Are they stupid or are they just lazy? All right, I'll tell you where this comes from. I see tons and tons of diabetes. Any doctor that works in a hospital in the United States sees tons of diabetes. Any patient over 60 years of age, it's a safe bet they're probably diabetic or pre-diabetic. And even if they don't officially carry that diagnosis, they probably are and they probably have some of these standard manifestations. Obesity, fatty liver, hypertension, coronary artery disease, cerebral vascular accidents, um, degenerative disc disease, gastroesophageal reflux. Uh, these are just so common, they're expected. Um, my overarching goal was to understand neurodegeneration and dementia, because I'm always trying to figure out why are people cognitively impaired? And you know, nine out of 10 got diabetes. So I figure I need to really understand diabetes. So years ago, I decided to try to have a deep understanding of it. I reread all the conventional textbooks, the biochemistry, physiology, pathology, internal medicine. I really didn't learn much. It's sort of, I already had that background. Um, then I read through the nutrition books. I read like the Pritikin stuff, the Dr. McDougall's books, Neil Bernard's, Roy Taylor's. I watched nutrition videos from a lot of wide variety of authors and I learned a lot. Um, and McDougall has a great quote. He says, patients should be fat counting, not carb counting for prevention of diabetes. Okay, then I read the genius paper, Michael Brownlee's paper on the unifying theory of diabetes complications, the 2004 Banting lecture. If you want to understand diabetes, that's the best paper ever written on the subject. Um, then the work of Gerald Sheldman. He's this genius out at Yale and he's an endocrinologist too. So there's some endocrinologists that are geniuses levels like this Gerald Sheldman guy. He's the one who used nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy to confirm that accumulation of fat within skeletal muscles was the earliest clinically detectable finding of increased insulin resistance, which is what causes diabetes, increased insulin resistance. So he confirmed that in a magnificent way. Um, you know, he also wrote a great paper on insulin resistance, etc. You can watch those videos yourself. They're free online. To, to see Brownlee's um, video lecture, you have to go to the American Diabetic Association website and sign in, but uh, you can watch his video as well as read his paper. The paper you can get for free without even signing in. Um, then I read all these other papers about diabetes in the brain, you know, the effect of fat on the blood-brain barrier, the fact that insulin, uh, insulin-dependent receptors, glucose type 4 transporters are present on neurons, so they need to have insulin sensitivity to take up all the glucose that they want for optimal function in the hippocampus and other locations. All the other stuff about dementia, deletory theory, apoptosis, etc. It's because, you know, I figured I could become one of the best, if not the best expert in the world on neurodegeneration and dementia. Why not? I know what's out there and most of it's crap, okay? Almost all the research being done at all our universities, all our big medical centers, almost all of it is just trying to win the lottery by finding a new drug. And because the goal is money and selling a drug, there's hardly anyone that's really just trying to figure out how things really work. Um, and the few, you know, a lot of these PhDs, they'll be very bright in a narrow area, but there's no great author out there other than Delatory. And, you know, it's real limited, the, the quality of the research and the papers written about neurodegeneration and dementia. Okay, so anyways, so I figured, you know, the next step for me after I read everything I could was to try to meet with who I thought would be potentially some of the best experts on diabetes. So I asked around the different doctors and nurses about some of the local universities who are the best diabetes experts. And I went and met with them individually, okay? I met with three of them who were highly recommended to me as being the best experts on diabetes. And so once I met with them, I was shocked. Not a single one of them had read any of the basic papers, any of the basic metabolism papers, any of the biochemistry papers, and certainly nothing about the brain. None, they, they couldn't really even have a conversation with me. And that's what they do for a living. These are the doctors who are the experts and who train fellows. And then um, they said stuff to me like they recommend avoid carbs. I'm like, well, that's idiocy. That's the whole paleo low carb diet nonsense. So I, I didn't argue with them. I didn't, I just wanted to see if there was anything I could get from talking to them that I could learn. And then um, when I told them I was a vegan, one of them said to me, well, why'd you do that? Are you trying to live to be 100? Sort of just like dragging the conversation into silliness. Um, and then one of them actually was really enthusiastic initially when I started talking about the biochemistry of diabetes, but then when it became so obvious that I just knew orders of magnitude more about the subject, um, I think that doctor was embarrassed and never followed up on their invitation for me to give a lecture uh, to their fellows on it. And so the point I'm saying is any person who really wants to understand diabetes, if they just devoted a month to reading about it, 
watching the, the videos on it and you know following up all the little concepts where they need to dial up their knowledge you can learn more in a month than the so-called big shot experts on the subject which is a rather shocking thing it's not that complicated and it's useful to know so what's the most important thing you know about diabetes high dietary fat is the main cause by far of insulin resistance there's other things that contribute to it excessive dietary sodium a lack of dietary magnesium and potassium excessive psychological stress excessive caffeine that sort of thing but the big the big one is excessive dietary fat and so by minimizing that one can dramatically almost super high percentage wise prevent type 2 diabetes and, and improve the condition of type 1 and type 1.5 and prevent uh, to a large extent type 3 you know dementia